it's flattering that anybody would give a f about my band for five fucking seconds to like even review it for better or worse you know what i mean like i'm just grateful that anybody would give time to my band period ghost cult magazine welcomes in our friend pete from either coven how are you doing man i'm doing man fucking kicking still somehow but right. here we are right on the life keeps challenging us and we keep challenging it back absolutely absolutely right on super glad to be with you here today you have a brand new album we spoke last a while back like a year and a half ago about the last ep or right before it and uh you had said at that time there was a lot of stuff in the works and you were working on these dream projects and now we have this new record out on the very respectful you know super respectable good fight records the relationship between the hammer and the nail right uh what an incredible title, what an incredible album. And, uh, you know, I'm just so glad you're still, you know, fighting a good fight and putting out real meaningful music. Thank you. I appreciate that greatly. Um, you know, it's at this point, it's like this, the only thing I know how to do. I'm not like, a, I don't work on cars and I don't do like sick shit where I go traveling to like Bali. You know what I mean? Like fancy shit. I, I just pick up a guitar and go, you know what I mean? Like that's pretty much the gist of it. So if I didn't have that, I don't even, I don't even know what I would do. Yeah. It's important to have healthy outlets. Um, a lot of people Absolutely. don't. And I, I, while I'm tired of talking about the last few years in the world, it's kind of hard to get away from the topic, but I will say you, you could easily judge the character of your friends by how they reacted to the world shutting down. And, and I'm not judging anybody. Like people lost their lives. People lost their family members, their livelihoods, but I'm just saying like some people acted wildly and predictably inappropriate during the shutdown um, yeah it wasn't think, a party for a lot of people like some people thought it was i think a lot of that is like we have this weird like stick it to them culture where it's like mm, you're like a nerd about this thing so you know what i'm gonna do the thing that upsets you because it's funny ha 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 it's like no bro just like be a person that like gives a fuck about if someone else lives or dies like it's not, it's not difficult. Like it's not, it's super not difficult, you know, with, even without politics, politics completely aside, it's just the most basic thing you could fucking do is just like pr pr try to not be around a million people, especially with no masks on, try not to do irresponsible shit when it comes to a thing that can spread easily. And a lot of people can't even do that. So, I mean, it sucks, but I mean, it is what it is, I guess. I mean, I have a few people that have died because of COVID um my aunt died in the hospital from covid my godmother actually so that that was probably the closest one to home so you know a couple of people here and there i have a couple i've known many many people that had it i had it once but i've known a couple of people that were like reckless about it and they were fine for the most part i know a bunch of people that got like super fucked up from it so i don't like being sick i don't like feeling like shit so i mean i'm just trying to be like you know relatively responsible like i don't give a fuck like i was not a fan of germs before all this stuff. I wouldn't touch door handles. I would get locked in bathrooms because like there was nothing to open the handle with, like open the door with. So I would just get like stuck in there until someone came in. Years ago, before they, before it was like a, you know, um, <clears throat> I won't touch shit. Like, and now it's like I'm like extra ridiculous about it. Like, I'm not touching gas pumps. I haven't touched a gas pump in fucking t probably since like the first two weeks I was driving. So. Yeah, no, that shit is disgusting. And now it's even grosser. Right on. I uh, I managed to go two plus years without it. I was back out in the world for a while and going to shows and doing all the things and being social. And then I went to one show. I wanted to see Darkest Hour <laughs> do the anniversary album. And I hugged strangers and I took photos and I shook hands and I ate a food and I was totally sick all of July, but I'm better now. And you're oh. high risk. You have, you know, had your well documented health issues, and you're, you know, you got to protect yourself. Like number one, was that was that the show with Bullet and uh, Zayo? No, they did a mini tour on the West Coast. Uh, oh, so it was uh, out here. It was uh, Toxic Holocaust, who I love, Joel and them, and then uh, Darkness Everywhere from the Bay Area opened. That's uh, the Light the City folks gotcha, and Jack gotcha. Owen. So killer. Killer, I mean, it was like an amazing night, but it was way tiny club, very crowded. I was not safe. <laughs> I was not being as safe oh, as I could have been. I got COVID this year, the beginning of this year, I think in February, from the Converge show. Converge, Thou, Full of Hell, Uniform. Like the tour of the year, so worth it. If you're going to get COVID yeah. at a gig, that's the one to get it at. But like, yeah. 
That shit sucked. Was that Converge just doing a straight up Converge show, or was that the Blood Moon show with Chelsea Wolf? Just, just Converge. Oh, so good. Uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to the next Converge thing, whatever that is. Uh, that Blood Moon record. People like to like be like weird about the Blood Moon record because it's labeled as Converge, but like it's just an expansion of what they can do of like their softer, more emotional moments. The mm-hmm. record is fucking phenomenal. It's insane. It's so um, I listened to it the other day on vinyl for the first time because they just shipped, um, and it was better than the first time I listened to a streaming, like by far. I was lucky enough to be in Europe when they did it live for the first time. And yes. the record is even better than the live. Cause I think they were still like experimenting and live. It's yeah. a little more stretched out and expanded upon, but uh, yeah, for not, you know, I know you're a big Converge fan as am I, uh, I, I saw a Converge in like a VFW <laughs> in the nineties in a little place in a shoebox hole in the wall in mass. I want to say I got there. you one beat. But you I probably because no, nah, I don't think so because that's awesome. But it was, I didn't even know we didn't know what we were seeing. I didn't know what we oh. were, like other than it looked like a regular hardcore show. To see them for the first time, it was mind blowing. I still like that is a treasured memory. There's a few, uh, and that's like converge is like a religious experience. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you know, yeah, they're like one of the biggest bands in of like you know of the genre or the culture or whatever. But like for it's for good reason. Um, but you remember the Gainesville Fest riot? I've heard about it. I wasn't down there. Yeah. I was on stage for that. Oh, shit. <laughs> I think it was 2001. Yeah, because it was the end of the year, 2001. Jane Doe just came out. Mm. And it was <laughs> insane. Literally, <laughs> I was standing on stage for it. While I was watching them like a fucking stage potato because it's one of my favorite bands. Um, we were on tour with Every Time I Die for like a week, and it ended in um, Gainesville. And we are just watching... Um, I think I was there with John Blake from Unbroken Wings. It was the first time we met, um, I think. Or I was with our fill-in drummer at the time, Matt, that used to play drums in Into the Moat. I was just watching, and my fu- I was like, what the fuck is going on? I'm a 20-year-old kid. People are beating the shit out of each other. It's absolutely insane. There's a video of it on the internet. Word. Maybe we'll link that in the description. It would be fun for context. Uh, while we're sharing stuff, I do want to say also, you know, speaking of Converge and Jacob, who is, you know, you know, almost a god among people. Uh, there's a lot of qualities that you have that remind me of Jacob. Just the care for people and whatever you do, you put a, the utmost amount of care and thought into it, whether it's your music or any of your other endeavors or, you know, charity. We were talking about charity linkups the last time and, you know, things like that, how to, how to engage and, you know, sort of energize your own fan base to amplify messaging that's important beyond just, hey, I have a band, check out my band. Uh, and that remind you remind me of Jacob in that way. He's the, even though he does a lot of different things, and he is always trying to promote what he does with the label and the band. But I feel like there's a there's an extra level there that a lot of other, other artists don't have, and you have it too. Okay, I'll take it. I mean, I never thought of it that way, but like if you're saying it from as an outsider looking in, cool, go for it. Right on. You know? So I thought we would do a track by track on the album, just thoughts and feelings on each track, whatever you want to share. There's a lot of guest appearances on here. They're all incredible. There's a really cool instrumental on here that I have questions about, but I wanted to kind of do this give and take thing, I think is a, a, a lot better than another standard interview where we just talked recently. Yeah, yeah go for it. Though. So I appreciate Let's you. Let's do it. Let's jump into the track list. I was looking for my phone a second ago, but I have it on the screen here to my right. So the, al- the album starts with Psalm of Cancer, which, of course, you have two incredible gets on there. And and obviously, it's a, a very personal topic, too. Well, that was actually the first riff of the song. Opening riff of the album was written by our other guitar player, uh, Devin Esta. Um, it was supposed to be a song that was supposed to be on. Well, that part was, was, was part of a song that was supposed to be for our last full length. Um, and we, this song just wasn't coming together. So we took it apart and I basically rewrote the entire song from that initial riff. Cause it was like one of the, my favorite riffs that we've ever had on the table. Um, and it was like, this is a ridiculous, this is ridiculous. Like it's unreasonable how good the riff is. Let me say. So I was like, all right, I'm going to fucking, I was going to take it and run with it and see what happens. And luckily it turned out pretty okay. I mean, there's a lot of converge influence in it. Um, some like weird sepultura drum parts for that like mashi kind of thing <clears throat> that um Devin also came up with um because he also plays drums he's he's a insane weirdo that just like can do all kinds of great things um but yeah this I mean obviously it's it's just about my time in hell going through treatment and uh 
just being awake for most of the day um, because I'm resting for the other parts of the day, you know, during the daytime um, and just going through everything involved with the suffering that comes with chemotherapy treatment, um, the suffering of thinking about the future and my fate and what's going to happen, um, trying to figure out what I'm going to do if this thing really kicks in and I'm fucked and now I got to find homes for my dogs. I need to get rid of all my shit. I need to leave a clean workspace when someone finds me. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it kind of goes through a lot of ups and downs, not really many ups, um, of, you know, that situation that, and I think a lot of people that have never been through it have no idea, uh, you know, um, about any of it. Um, I've sent it, I, you know, when you get cancer, you get like, you have like a little network of like cancer friends. Um, and I sent it to most of them and they were like, Holy shit. Like, um, when that came out, actually funny enough, Mark from Feeling Mouth hit me up, uh, hit the band up on Instagram and was like, Oh my God. Hey, you know, cause he just went through his battle. Um, so we became pretty, pretty cool, pretty tight buds. Like just talking about that, because like I said, out of the, out of the fucking woodwork, um, other people that know what you've gone through or what you're going through um, are really good at support um, when it comes to any of those types of things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the lyrics are pretty self-explanatory, I think. Um, I was uh, pre, um, I was pre doing pre-production uh, at my house um, sometime last year. Uh, my buddy Tarek was in town. He sings in a band called Intercourse. And I was like, yo, we should get you on a track. He's on a track. Um, he's like, cool. I was like, you, I mean, if you, we can hang, he was in town for, I forgot what. Um, but I was like, I was like, yo, maybe we can get you on this pre-pro, see what it sounds like if you, you know, if you want, just for fun. Cause I got to do, I have to do this because we're going to the studio next week or whatever. And I was, I pre-produced, pre pro this song. And he was like, Jesus Christ, dude, that's fucking dark. Like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. This is what I came up with. I don't, you know. Like it's not, it doesn't seem too like extreme to me because I went through it. So I wrote it. So I know what I'm like comfortable with. Um, but like, I think reading that about a loved one would probably fucking bum me out. But yeah, so we got um, Dwid on the track. Um, Shane just messaged him because it's, it's like one of uh, both of ours favorite bands. So message Dwid. He was like, yeah, I'm down. My buddy, Aunt, uh, Tony, uh, he sings in a band called Pain Ritual. I wanted him to come in because his voice is ridiculous. Um, I just wanted to have him come in and just beef up the gang vocal parts. Um, and he fucking knocked it out of the park. So he's on four songs, you know, just on, I was just like, yeah, no, nah, fuck it. Let's just do, let's do that. Like, so basically most of the vocals you hear are me, Devin and Tony. That's it for that song. Totally sick. And thanks for sharing all that. Uh, Afraid and Suffering is next, which features Dan Wadent, who you know people should know is also awesome. Oh, one of the fucking best singers in the fucking game. Mm. Um, one of the coolest dudes, Sayo, you know, was such a fucking important band to me when I was a kid. That first full length on Tooth and Nail was fine. And then Blood and Fire came out and I was like, what the fuck is this? I was like, this is the most insane shit I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, and I lost all, either way. So Zayo has been, you know, like with me since Blood of Fire came out. So I wanted to have him. I, I figured something like a, a song like this is a longer one. It's very much in the vein of like old giant uh, and like Amon Ra, I think. This is more of like our traditional sound, I guess. And uh, I wanted to have him on it because it was uh, the most emotional song, I think, on the record. Uh, it's about my dog. And uh, yeah, it was about her her role in my life and like her dying basically and how impactful that kind of loss is. Um, I don't know if you ever had like a dog that died on you, but it is easily the worst pain I've ever felt. And I've been through some shit. I'm still not over it. I have, I would show you, but I don't want to fuck up this camera situation. I have a whole ass shrine dedicated to my dog. It's ridiculous. It oh, is. Good, as you should. And I have this on me all the time, but yeah, she fucking died in my arms. Mm. Um, the day before I was supposed to leave for my last treatment. Yeah, it was the worst fucking day of my life. And every day after that was just as bad for the most part. But yeah, the song came out cool. Aside from that, it was the first song I think we started recording. I had to fucking stop. We recorded that song over two days because it had some singing vocals. So we broke up the singing vocals the first day and then the yelling vocals the second day. 
both days I had to stop and I was just like, I had to kick back and be like, all right, give me a second. I was like fucking bawling in the goddamn studio. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, that's a tough, that's a tough loss. Like I'll never feel another pain like that. Um, that's worse than any physical pain I've ever felt in my life, emotional pain. And, you know, that's where we're at. Ain't that some shit? Uh, sorry for your loss. And uh, I always say pets are better than people. They're not really pets; they're family. And uh, they, they know you better than anybody else. They, you know what I mean? They surely do, and they know unconditional love like nobody else. Yep. And uh, they don't they don't screw each other over. <laughs> you know, the animal kingdom, the human kingdom, we're all weird, uh, weird relationships. But in any case, thanks for sharing again. God hates flags is next next up with Tarek, which is again super cool. Probably my favorite track on the record. All right. All right. Um, that's the hardest one, I think, to sing at the same time and play, which sounds kind of weird. Um, it's just that weird, like off timing, like neurosis part. Um, yeah. So like I said, Tarek did, uh, pre-production vocals with me and he sounds like a nut. Um, and then I hit him up and I was like, Hey, you ready to, you want to, uh, I sent him the song and all the lyrics when it was time to actually record for real. And I hit him up a couple of days later. I was like, Hey, what's the story? What's the update? He's like, Oh, you wanted me to do it for real? And I was like, yes. Like, why would you think I didn't? I thought we had a, you know, he's like, oh shit, okay. Yeah, so let me bang this out, got it back in. Um, our buddy, Michael Darling, who all, sings in a band called Seven Serpents from South Florida also uh, does some vocals on the track. Um, God Hates Flags is a song about kind of just the things that we've seen politically in the last few years where we absolutely disregard our best interest just to stick it to the other guy people have a weird sense of like nationalism and pride for a place that like doesn't really deserve it. Like if you really wanted to be proud of your country, you should hold it to a higher standard than what we currently have. Like, it's like, but why don't you, why don't you move to Venezuela? It's like, no motherfucker. Why don't you worry about cleaning up your shit? Like the shit ain't right. Like what we have going on is just not, it's not conducive to like a happy living situation. So like you were saying, oh yeah, America, America, but like name five fucking things that's so great about this place that, that don't exist anywhere else in the world. And it's like, oh, well, uh, 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 uh. oh, funny enough, um, when we were recording this, the, one of the last lines is happiness is assassination. And Tarek was like, oh man, you gotta be white to say that shit. I can't say it. And I was like, all right, whatever, man, do what you want to do. You mean, if you want it, it's yours. But don't feel like you have to. But yeah, so that was funny. But yeah, that was a cool one. That was, uh, I think, the third song we wrote for this for the record. I think that was uh, Shane's debut of writing. Order things he, uh, made, yeah. That was Shane's debut writing. He came up with kind of the main part, and I think he just played something. And I was like, oh shit, let me see, let me and let me rearrange that. But and then the big like cannibal sounding dun 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 dun. dun. He wrote that too. So that was pretty fun. It was of Might and Failure, the fourth track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, of Might and Failure has the singer from Bird of Lemon, and he, okay. he now sings in Fistula. Um, his name's Shane Post. His, again, another band that was very important to like my coming up in hardcore or metal or however you want to, you know, however you want to operate it. I knew I wanted him on the record because he's a fan of the band and his voice is fucking ridiculous. His voice now sounds better now than it ever did, like ever. And his voice was insane back then. So so that was awesome to have. It's just like me being an asshole and being like, oh my God, I can't wait to have all my like vocal heroes on a record. Um, so I did that. We didn't have the opportunity to do that with, with um, on the Century Media record because of, I guess, legalities and things. If we could have, we would have. Uh, but a minor failure is about the prison industrial system. Same shit that, you know, I feel like it's just a, a dead horse at this point. And it's like a fucking prime example of how fucked up of a country we are that we just talked about. We filmed that video in Nashville, Georgia, in like some old prison uh, or an old jail where they used to fucking hang people in and shit. It was fucking dark. But yeah, so we did that. Uh, our buddy Matt Zagorski from The Machinist and Dying Whale um, started doing videos. So I was like, oh, definitely. Like, um, you know, Matt's been a bud for years. So it only made sense to do that. But um, that song was actually supposed to be a Remembering Never song. It was. We practiced it for months and months and months. And that middle part, the part that sounds like ether, every time we play it, the band would be like, oh, this is the ether song. It's like, what? It sounds like Converge with like a little bit of an ether part. Because so I was like, fuck it. You know what? I'm taking that shit. And then took it, used it for this band. And then we gave Remembering Never one of our songs. So we'll see what happens with that. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, that's a killer. I love. I do actually. That video is great. Um 
we'll be looking out for more stuff uh, along those lines. Uh, so the warmth of bath water is actually next, the warmth of your bath water. And that again has Anthony on it. That song is just basically about, uh, that was actually the first song we wrote for the record, um, like start to finish the whole, you know. Um, so we wanted to, have, you know, I was just like, you know what? I really like Deftones and like fucking being weird. So let's do that. Um, but yes, I think the longest song on the record, it's got that real nice intro played by Devin. Um, very classy. Um, it reminds me of like being at a beach or something, you know? Uh, but yeah, songs about, you know, finding love um, that you feel like you don't deserve. Um, having all these fucking problems um, and kind of not knowing what's going to happen because of those problems whether they be physical or psychological or both in my case. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, that's pretty much, I never really put much thought into it. I just was the first heap of lyrics I wrote because I started um, dating my girlfriend and I was like feeling some kind of way. And I was like, oh my goodness. I really like the metaphor of bathwater. Um, so it's a no doubt song. So basically it's a no doubt reference and a Stone Temple Pilots reference all at the same time if you get those references i am old enough to get both of those references holy fuck um but awesome <laughs> that's wild and uh awesome for you to share that where those that came from that's it that's insane temple of woo which i imagine is like temple of woo is the instrumental track i mentioned earlier and is next kind of i was writing i was like really into godspeed for like a year and change um and i pretty much all i listened to i was like you know what i want to write a song like godspeed i feel like we already have that kind of you know similar vibe on certain parts so let me just expand this thing, fuck with a track. And I remember trying to record at my house and it needs to be real quiet because you know, I had like a microphone set up to a big ass amp and my amp was in my closet. And I remember sitting outside my door <clears throat> of my bedroom and trying to record to not make any noise in the bedroom. And my dogs are just sitting there like, dude, what the fuck? Are you don't play that thing out here. You play it in that room. What are you doing? And I'm just like, I'm just going. I didn't really have a name for a fucking instrumental because what do you name an instrumental song? What the fuck is the song about? So I figured I would just make it as a tribute to my dog. Her name was Woo. Um, she got that name from the animal hospital I worked at. The um, kennel lady's kids found her in the middle of the street, like all beat the fuck up. Um, and like, they think she was used for a bait dog. So, but they couldn't keep her at their house. So they, um, left her at my job and I guess her name was Wu W O or no, her name was Wu Wu W O O W O O because that's what she said all the time. When I just, when I agreed to take the dog home, I didn't fucking want a dog. But when I agreed to take the dog home, um, I was like, I'm not naming this. I'm not calling this dog. Woo, 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 woo. I'm naming you Wu, changing it to a U and we're done here. That's it. And uh, that's what I did. But I don't know if you heard, so I was reading, I was, I was watching some review, like, you know, people do like YouTube reviews. Um, and they were like, oh, there were some guest vocals in the back. I didn't really understand what they were. I couldn't, they were so low. And I'm like, bro, that's a dog, fool. Like, I didn't understand a bark. Like, <clears throat> um, so yeah, I recorded, aside from the drums, I recorded both guitars and the bass and like the little wind chimes and the bells and stuff. Um, it was a fun one because we got, just got to turn all these ridiculous pedals on and just fucking go for it um but yeah that was uh that was the story of that and it's like no i think it's a nice little tribute to my dog um that'll be you know around for the foreseeable future you know as long as spotify and people still have physical media that will exist forever until the lights go out basically there it is till the uh apocalypse and the mad max times come um yep. the matrix for real but uh, yeah, man, that's that's beautiful. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, rightly calling out uh, reviewers sometimes not, you know, just looking too hard or not looking hard enough. That's fair. Guilty sometimes. Guilty is charged occasionally. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It, it's flattering <laughs> that anybody would give a fuck about my band for five fucking seconds to like even review it for better or worse. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just grateful that anybody would give time to my band, period. I hear you. I got to read this one off the phone to get it right properly. But the final track is Consequences of Self in parentheses, let the nails carve our names in rust, featuring your friend and friend of ours and the great Howard Jones of Light the Torch and formerly of Kill Switch Engage. Yep. So consequences, the original title was what was in the parentheses only. 
And I was just like, that is too long. Let me make it short and catchier. And then I put the parentheses at the end. I do like long titles. Drowning Man, Shai Halud, they fucked that up for me. But so that's why I like long titles. But yeah, so that song was my least favorite song before we went in the studio. For sure. I was like, this song, I don't know, we should probably, because we cut two songs. One went to Memory Never, one went to my new band that were both a little too fast for us. So this was a song I was ready to cut as well. So we went in the studio, started recording it. It was coming out real nice, put the vocals down. I had no idea what was going to happen because I'd never sung this. I, I like pre-production the songs, but like they sound like shit because I have no idea what I'm doing. I have funny story, uh, which is a good cheat for this record. I recorded bass parts for all of the singing melodies and just copied the bass melodies. So I had no idea what it was going to sound like. Sang everything. It sounded cool. Andy, Bill, uh, Andy Nelson dropped a little Weezer-esque harmony on one of the parts. I was like, oh my God, damn daddy, what is that? So that happened. I think we're working on the bass. And then Devin was like, hold up, Jack. I hear something. Let me just try this. And he fucking plugged in the guitar. And he was like, yo, run that, run that back from the beginning. And he did that. Like that harmony, that fucking most beautiful part in the song. Like just busted out out of nowhere. The zero fucking hour. And I was just like, what? How did you, what is happening here? And it turned the whole fucking song around. The song was already starting to turn around, but that fucking, now it was like one of my favorite songs on the record, just because of, you know, what it went through. And then that like fucking woo, kicked it in the stratosphere. Jesus. So yeah, that was a thing. And then um, when we tried to get people signed up for, to be on the record period, there's a few people that we were trying to get that either didn't have time, they were on tour, um they just didn't get back to me <clears throat> so if everybody that i wanted on the record made it we would have had like five more fucking people so i'm kind of glad that people were busy but we were just like okay well we got all these people signed on where are we gonna put them so i was like i don't know and a lot of people can't like they're not good at paying attention or directions which is fine because it's like hey thank you for doing it here's kind of like the map that i want you to do but yeah i think i don't know i think i was listening to a lot of kill switch with howard the howard records um when i started going back to the gym and everything and um you know i've been a huge blood has been shit fan since you know right before we signed to ferret so i was like oh yeah this is like a fucking over i'm gonna see because he used to manage around never so but i haven't talked to him in 15 fucking years so i had a friend that i think went on tour with them his name's don i was like yo can you reach out for me and see you know he's like oh yeah definitely i emailed howard he was like oh yeah dude definitely like that sounds sick and i was like what the fuck i know i did not imagine him to fucking email me um, back or even give a fuck or even like kind of remember who I am because like, who the fuck am I? But yeah, he was down. He was excited about it. So he knocked it out of the park. Uh, he's only on the tail end of the song. And then I think like a couple other lines here and there, like very scarce. I was like, yo, can you do like weird blood has been shed singing stuff? And I think he didn't like that. But uh, I mean, no one wants to go back to like, you know, where they came from. Like, I understand that totally. But also like, well, it's been shit, man. Come on. That's like top tier, God tier shit. You know what I mean? Like right, right on. Absolutely. Uh, and Howard's Howard's great people. I was going to just say, in yeah. kind of looking back at, as a whole, it's kind of cool, like a cool yearbook of your whole career in music that all these guests and friends who some of them you looked up to and they're now on your record, but they are also your peers and some of them came after you too. So I think that's really special. Not everybody gets to do that in their career. Yeah, so this is really, really super cool. Oh, absolutely. It, it's, it, I feel like a big ass dork because it's like, these are just people that I've just like loved their bands since I was a fucking child. Most of them, um, like Michael Darling and Tarek, good friends. Um, me and Tarek have one of those weird relationships where it's like the first time we met, it was like we knew each other for decades. Um, and we were like dogs within the first five fucking minutes. Um, and he's wearing like a Reptar button up shirt with like red shorts. And he intercourse fucking knocked it out of the park. It was awesome. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I, you know, I like to keep it friendly. I like to keep it in house. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it's definitely cool to like hear it back and be like, oh my God, like how the fuck did I convince these people to be on this fucking jabroni ass record that I, you know, that we wrote that was just like, oh, cool. Okay. Um, but there it is. It's awesome. Like I'm I fucking amped on it. You know, right on. Uh, obviously it sounds like you mentioned in passing, you have other things in the works, uh, maybe some new stuff with remembering never what's, what can you share that we were able to hear about? Uh, remember never's writing it's the age old story, but three of these dudes got kids. And when you got kids, you fucking ruin your life. No offense to anybody that has kids. 
but it just ruins your like opportunity to have as much time to be creative. And that sucks. So basically I'm just waiting on these dudes to like hunker down, figure this shit out. And um, I did start a new band. Um, we just got our masters back. We'll talk about that later at some point. We did an EP in Gainesville a few weeks ago with uh, John um, at Warhorse Recordings. Um, John is the brother of Seth that used to play drums in Yoshira, rest in peace. Um, so I've been trying to record over there for quite some time. And then especially when Seth passed, I was trying to super make it a point to go over there and record just cause like, you know, it's one of those things like Seth was like the dog. Um, and I don't know, it's just, it's just like one of those things where I just wanted to make sure that we recorded with John. I recorded with John at some point in time. And I was like, Oh, perfect opportunity. Let's go to Gainesville, record six songs. Um, it's cool. It sounds like, um, cursed mixed with like, uh, a little bit of all pigs must die mixed with like integrity mixed with like some other stuff. Uh, the name of that band is called heathen prayer. Our Instagram is heathen prayer ATL. There it is. We'll link everything in the description. That is very exciting about new <clears throat> music. And again, you know, always, you know, uh, this album is here and now, right now. So everybody go out and get it. We will link everything in the description. And again, it's always great to talk to you and see you here. And I just wish you the best of health and success, man. Hey, thank you so much, man. I'm like, I'm excited. We got to do this again. You know, it's right been, uh, it's been a couple minutes, you know? Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much for hanging out with Ghost Cult, man. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Take care. I'll see you soon.